Hey everybody, it's Austin Ward. Welcome into Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto. Another very special guest with us this, this week, current Minnesota Vikings, former Ohio State star Jalen Holmes, uh, working with How's She Gonna Eat. We've talked about that a lot with your partner, Tracy Sprinkle, mm -hmm. transition to the NFL. A lot of ground to cover. We haven't seen you in about a year. Mm -hmm. It's been a busy year for you. Yeah, it has a rookie year. I had my son three months ago. So yeah, it's, it's, congratulations. Been a, it's been a great, it's been a great year. It, I've asked Tracy about this a number of times. Mm. How's she going to eat? He tells the same story every time. How did this company come to be? Why do you guys like doing that so much? You're, you're scattered around the country, but now you've got your own business and brand. Yeah, he told you? He, he, I just want to make sure that everyone's got the same story here. What you got? You know, Taekwon. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah, <okay. laughs> Basically, yeah, the story you got is true. All right, so what is it that you guys, you know, what prompted you to maybe put it on some t-shirts and sell it and, and the, you know, a couple friends still working together? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the two guys that, you know, me, Taquan, and Tracy, we all real still, we do everything together. Sure. When we, you know what I'm saying, when we are together. So uh, that bond is there. And uh, I feel like for me, it was big when, before we played Oklahoma, my senior year, mm -hmm. and you see like the whole student section <laughs> with the big how she going to eat, and we, we getting involved with Block O. Yeah. And, you know, people just around campus, like I'd be walking to class, it's how she going to eat, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then crazy, crazy thing is, uh, Students was making shirts before we did. Sure, because you couldn't. And, yeah, and it, <laughs> that's a whole. Oh, that's stuff. another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but I was just praying that hopefully somebody don't try to take this before we did. And as <laughs> soon as we got to the NFL, we you know we came together and just made it official. It's still you know it seems really popular. I, and Brandon Bowen was wearing some to spring ball practice and get in mm -hmm. on that. People seem to really like that message. Mm -hmm. it, it, Aside from where it came from, what mm -hmm. does it actually mean to you? I mean, I feel like it's whatever you want to make it. And, uh, you know, Brandon Bowen has a child of his own now. And, uh, you know, he has his own family. It's, it's Anybody can take it as, you know, just providing mm -hmm. and uh, just having fun with it, really. Yeah. Uh, I done had different people tell me what they like, it, like how they <laughs> use it. So, I mean, it's just really what you want to make it. And, and that's what we want to do, get our customers just to do what they want with it. And as long as they're having fun with it, and that's what, the three owners is about is, you know, having a good time yeah. and, and we with it. Could be a good Father's Day gift coming up, but uh, yeah, yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> so look for that. Obviously, uh, we'll, we'll plug that for these guys anytime. You should check them out. How she gonna eat? Um, but being a father, how's that been for you? Man, it's amazing. Uh, just it's like you seeing yourself, and I mean, it's it's hard because I'm not getting no sleep. Uh, his mom's not getting no sleep, but uh, he's a blessing and. Um, he doing something new every day. Yeah. Like the other day he tried to sit up on his own and it's just seeing that it's like, wow, like <laughs> I was once that size right. before, you know, and this is Sam, man. He he got a big smile and it kind of helped you. Like I come home and practice tired and then you see him smiling and it's like, all right, back, I'm good. Well, I think you're still growing, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure what. No, nah, I think I, I need to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, need to be done. I know we've, you know, it, I've sometimes you see you guys leave, and I know it, it's different when you go from Coach Mick, and obviously you guys develop a lot from when you're a freshman to your senior. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. Yeah, yeah. But some, you know, it seems a little different though when you get to the next level, and that's all you have to do. You don't have classes anymore. Mm -hmm. You guys are working out, and it's a different physicality at that level. You know, how's that transition gone for you? Man, it's actually good like I, I love school you know what i mean i mean like i'm glad i had an opportunity sure. to go to school for free but not in the school no more like, <laughs> so but no I, I gotta go back i'm actually gonna come back and finish up my degree i got one semester left but uh just now i mean you just really focus on football mm -hmm. you don't have to really focus on you know penn state and this this exam i got the day before the game like yeah. that's a that's a stressful week right there sure. so now I can just worry about the Bears and just the Bears and <laughs> worry about, you know, my son. Other than that, I don't have no other big time, you know, stresses. But, you know, once I get back to school, it's going to be back. But. Sure. Talking with Jalen Holmes on Letterman Live, brought to you by Buyers Auto. It, it, it almost feels like you've been gone longer. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like it's been a year, or 10 years for you since you were wearing the Scarlet and Gray? And it seemed like yesterday we was just... I was talking to Tracy when I first got here. Like, it seemed like we were just here. Mm -hmm. And this is like the place where we... We came here as, you know what I mean, boys, and we transformed to men here. So uh, it really just seemed like it was yesterday, man. We right this time we'll be having a cookout or something like that. Just, <laughs> I just, I really miss that. Really miss being with these guys every day. And that's what built the bond that that team had. And that's why the Ohio State teams were so good. We all were so close. And when you get to the NFL, it's kind of different. 
you still you still have a little bond, but like we had everyday struggles sure. together and we came up like <laughs> In the field, we got everybody has struggles, but it's rich people's struggles. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, that's, that's definitely a little different. Yeah, yeah. like now nah, we remember, like, dang, I need some gas money. Like, that's right, you know, stuff like that. Let's put in on some that. That's just stuff that I just miss, you know, just that group message, like, hey, we about to have a cookout, everybody throw in this, and mm -hmm. we we made something out of nothing here. Yeah, you guys still, I saw that last week, and kind of what prompted me to reach out to you again about coming to hang out was Taekwon going through drills and having Coach Jay work with them and those mm -hmm. guys back in the Woody. What is it about the program, Coach Johnson, whatever, that when you're back in town, that that's where you guys want to be? It's just, you know, he's so good at what he what he does, and he's respected throughout college football and the NFL, you know, so why not come back and still, you always can continue to learn. Mm -hmm. And I know he got some new stuff. We're going tomorrow morning. <laughs> tomorrow I mean, morning. He's going to get us. I know he's going <laughs> to get us, but uh, uh, he always got something new, and it's trying to expand our game and, Going back to the Woody, it's just like, you know, going back to your mama house, college. Like, it's it's always genuine love there, and why not? Is it his voice that you hear when you're out there going through reps still? I know you have got you have a professional coach now. Yeah, yeah. But do you still hear Coach Jay? Yes. You hear Santa Claus in your mind? Yeah, yes, 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 man. He, uh, he's, yeah, Santa Claus. He, <laughs> Santa Claus is getting real. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I still hear Coach Jay a lot, man. And I talk to him often, and I ask him about different stuff far as football and off the field, but I just hit him up and just ask him, like, Coach, what do you think about this or that far as football technique-wise? And and that's just, you know, a testing to him, mm. how good of a coach he was. All right, before we is. before you get out of here, um, you know, you were around, you guys were around to see the start of, you know, Chase Young. There's a lot. He's starting to get this, I this told next level hype. You, I mean, I'm, you did. I told y'all. Now you see what, <laughs> what he's looking like when yeah. you're around or you're going to yeah. go see him tomorrow maybe in the workouts with mm -hmm. Coach Jay. What, do you, what is your expectation for him, and what is the pressure when you get to be an upperclassman in, in that Rushman room to be the leader and to live up to what you guys did, you know, and, and pass down to him? Yeah, my, my biggest challenge for Chase is it's really nothing to do with the football field. Uh, I know he's going to handle that, and just for him to challenge the other people on the D-line to raise their game to his level, mm -hmm. and that's going to be his biggest challenge, and, I, and he he's going to do it. I know he's going to do it, but... That's the biggest thing that he's going to have to do this year, just to bring those guys up with him. And I know he has everything to do that. All right. Anything else you need to plug before we get you out of here? Get your How She Gonna Eat merch, man. There that's, we go. that's all I got. <laughs> all right, perfect. How She Gonna Eat. Great to have Jalen Holmes in here hanging out once again. Uh, one of my favorite players to cover back in the day. Always told it like it was. And I tease him a little bit about those pterodactyl limbs right there. So uh, <laughs> it was always fun to be with him. Thanks for hanging out today. Now we're going to kick it over to Berm and get a recruiting update here on Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto. All right, now we welcome in Jeremy Birmingham, the director of recruiting here at Letterman Row as Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto Rolls Along. Somehow I'm on in a different shirt now. I don't know how that happened, but uh, it's the wonders of uh, internet television. Berm, uh, big weekend for Ohio State. Grant Toutant flipping from Penn State to Ohio State. And not only is that big for the offensive line, but also it seems like another big head-to-head -head battle after, on the heels of Julian Fleming where Ohio State sort of picking on uh, the Nittany Lions right now on the recruiting trail. You know, I think back to Urban Meyer's arrival in November of 2011, and the first thing he did was uh, kind of pick on Joe Paterno's Penn State recruiting class that was falling apart as Paterno was being fired and took Noah Spence from uh, Pennsylvania, the top-ranked player in the state, um, went out and flipped players uh, that were committed to Penn State, like Joey O'Connor, who was from Colorado at the time. And I mean, I guess he's still from Colorado. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it seems like you have to have – that uh, that nemesis, that adversary on the road, and Penn State has done a great job on the recruiting trail, and they're they're after some big time players. But ultimately, as James James Franklin said last year, they are not elite, and Ohio State is elite. And when you have a program like Ohio State, and you are a, a high school t you know football player, it means something when you get that Ohio State offer. It's a different thing, and, and uh, for Grant, that was really the, the draw. When you when you look at this and you know, Penn State is still recruiting at a pretty good level, as you said, but you know Ohio State when Georgia was down, they went in there and got some big time players. Tennessee when they were having issues with Butch Jones, they went to Tennessee and got players. When Texas was struggling before Tom Herman arrived, that's when they went in and made this, this Lone Star pipeline. Is it possible that this is what's happening right here? Is that Ohio State since his weakness with James Franklin and and are targeting him that way, or is it, am I reading too much into that? I mean, I, I 
it's a possibility, but I don't know that that's really what's going on. Um, this is a position where there are a handful of programs around the country, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma, who have risen to a level that's so much different than these other programs are. And that's not a knock on Penn State or Michigan or anyone else. There are just uh, very few programs, very few places in the country that offer all of the things Ohio State can. And um, for a player like Julian Fleming, if is the prime example here with Brian Hartline and Ryan Day, that offense just makes more sense than it does to go to a place like Penn State where they've had three receivers coaches in three years. And James Franklin's offense has looked anemic anytime that Joe Moorhead has not been the offensive coordinator. So um, I think there are other states out there that Ohio State is maybe looking at in a way similar to what you're talking about. North Carolina is one. I think they've started to see that there's an opportunity there. Um, but, uh, you know, we saw the Tar Heels obviously hire Mac Brown, and we'll see if they can stem that tide. But um, it, there are places like that, but I don't think Pennsylvania is that spot yet. All right. You've written a number of times we roll along here on Letterman Live, brought to you by Byers Auto. Uh, Berm, in, in your notebook every day, dotting the I's, this weekend, June 21st, June 21st, June 21st keeps coming up, but there's still one more between here uh, and then. So what's on tap for this coming weekend for the Buckeyes? Yeah, the June 14th weekend isn't um, a slouch either. The Buckeyes have a five-star running back coming in to visit, Bajan Robinson from uh, South Point Catholic in Tucson. They have three of their top defensive line targets in Vernon Brockton from Texas, uh, Ty Hamilton from nearby Pickerington, and, and Jacoby Cowan from North Carolina, and Kendrick Binley-Jones from North Carolina, so actually four guys. Uh, coming in to visit this weekend. And I think that uh, the, the real thing to watch is going to be uh, Bijan Robinson because we talk so much about the relationship between Ohio State and Kendall Milton, but it, it sort of been left uh, in the dark that Bijan Robinson's still out there because he's never visited. But it, he's a five-star guy from Arizona, an area of the Buckeyes have hit well on the recruiting trail. And he's a player that many people believed months ago was, was favoring Ohio State despite never visiting. So this weekend is a really huge opportunity for them to make an impression with him and to say, hey, you know what? If you want to be the guy here at Ohio State, here's your chance. We'll we'll, we'll take you and not Kendall Milton if, if that's what it takes to to have you here. But Texas uh, uh, is one school to really watch there. But that's that's this weekend is not going to hold a you know be a second fiddle to anybody. Plus they have a huge recruiting camp. Um, on campus on Saturday, so there's going to be a lot of other big-time players in, in the city. When we previewed the start of camp season for Ohio State, Berm, you talked about that head-to-head -head battle at tight end uh, that was playing out last week in that first session of camp. And I don't know, did it play out the way you expected or not? Because it they left that day and neither one of them had an offer. One eventually came, but did you expect that or how did that, that situation play out for what, what matched uh, what you were looking for? Yeah, I mean, they were both really good. I think that the unfortunate thing for Ohio State fans and is if, if you're hoping for the, the Buckeye legacy, Luke Lachey, to get the offer, it's that he plays at Grandview Heights High School. And, and as talented as he is, as physically gifted as Luke is, he is very, very uh, skinny. He's not college ready as far as his size. Joe Royer at 6'5", 225, 230 pounds is. And Joe Royer plays in one of the best football conferences in the country. Uh, at Cincinnati Elder. And I think that those two things, aside from the fact that he was really good at camp on Thursday, is what separated him from Luke Lachey. When you look at the 2020 football season for Ohio State, you're going to have Jeremy Ruckert um, at tight end. But you don't know it, what you don't know what happens with uh, Jake Hausman or, or Rashad Berry will be gone. You don't know if Luke Farrell, if, you know, there's always all these possibilities of guys leaving after four years, um, even though they've redshirted. So you just don't know where they're going to go. And, uh, I think that they thought about this from a perspective of who's the most college ready. And that's why I think that they ultimately decided on Joe Royer. It's not a knock on Lachey who, if he doesn't end up getting an Ohio state offer in the next few weeks. And I think that's still a possibility. If a guy like Cam large, who is visiting the weekend of June 21st, if he comes in and doesn't commit, I think there's still an opportunity for Lachey to get an offer in a few weeks. If he doesn't get it, he's going to end up playing football at Michigan state or Iowa and probably be a real pain in the butt for the Buckeyes in a few years. But um, <laughs> you just can't take everyone. And and that's, you know, especially at tight end, you're looking at a year where it's rare they're going to take two in this class. So um, it, it, it played out how I thought it would because I personally thought that Royer had the most immediate impact ability. 
And I don't think that there's a gap um, upside wise that, that's large enough to, to take Lachey just because he's the legacy. Makes sense. Great insight. Great stuff as always from Berm, uh, the director of recruiting here at Letterman Row. This has been Letterman Live brought to you by Byers Auto. Appreciate Berm uh, giving me that uh, scoop there. Jalen Holmes hanging out and talking about his professional journey and everything going on there with the Vikings. And Coach Johnson, I'm Austin Ward. Uh, we'll see you right back here next week for Letterman Live brought to you by Byers Auto.